Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sumit. Uh, here's Chris, and we have Siddharth there. We're going to talk about act facial action unit detection. Uh, so just to give you a brief what facial action units are, it's more about the uh, relative muscular position, which can help you to figure out uh, what your facial expression is, like if you're feeling sad or not. These are some of the examples of uh, uh, mouth-based action units. And uh, so what is it used for? It's, uh, it could be used for emotion recognition. Uh, some of the examples are here. It could also be used for uh, robot-human interaction. So basically how robot finds out uh, what a person is feeling, what his uh, uh, emotional expression is. Uh, moving next, we use the interface software, which helps us to get points, facial points from the video. And we get uh, 49 facial points from it, which we used uh, in our machine learning model for, uh, for detecting uh, the facial action units. Our data collection, we collected our own data. Uh, we basically have 429 action unit sequence with around seven subjects. Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, it's, it's kind of a, uh, not so clean data, as well as the problem is like uh, there is a lot of variation. So on the left side, you see it's just the facial points just for one video and for one subject. On the right side, it is just for the mouth-based action units for lips and for the nose. So there is a lot of variation, so we have a lot of challenges. Uh, our main contributions are features engineering and data visualization. So basically, we visualize a lot of data, build our features, and then we again visualize. Uh, at the end, we use uh, hierarchical, uh, hierarchical SVM classifier to basically uh, classify the final action units. Uh, so on, uh, coming to the feature engineering, uh, this is on, on the left side, you saw, uh, we see that uh, we do a lot of features for the lips. Uh, so this is just for the mouth based, we, uh, we'll have for others. So we use area of the lips, we use uh, like polynomial fitting, we use angle between nose and lips. So all these different feature engineering that we tried for our project. Uh, and for each of these engineering, we basically visualize the data. We see if they are able to help us or not. And then we go out uh, and redo the, uh, the features part. Uh, so next, Chris is going to talk about the hierarchy of SVM that we tried and which, uh, which is giving us some good results. So the idea behind this model is maybe you don't have to do exact action unit recognition, but you only have to do approximate action unit recognition. So for example, the, uh, the smile action unit is very similar to the big smile action unit. So the first thing we did was group our action units into clusters here that you see on the screen, and then try and first group our uh, particular input into which cluster it is. And then once we'd figured out which cluster it was in, we ran a separate classifier to determine which action unit in particular it was. So we thought this might work because, well, you don't have to like tell exactly which action unit is going. And also, once you know which cluster it's in, you can use a more discriminative set of features to like, uh, determine exactly which action unit is showing. So we have uh, data for each of our little clusters. Um, the, there's two, two separate things going on this slide. The first is the confusion matrix on the left is for the in, inside the cluster data. This is how it was performing, uh, distinguishing between smile and big smile, the two members of this cluster. And the right is the ROC curve for detecting whether or not it was a member of the cluster. So this uh, uh, confusion matrix is pretty boring, two entries. We actually did really well on smile. The open cluster, which was like open mouth, O mouth, uh, various mouth shapes with O's, uh, we did pretty well on this, too. Look at the ROC curve. This is like the best ROC curve you can get, so we're pretty happy with this. Uh, the left, left action units are ones where you have like left skew to your face. Uh, these ones we're not doing as well on as we might have hoped. The other group of this is the right action units. One potential reason for this is that the interface software, uh, it only has 49 points in it, which isn't that many, and they're not that well distributed. Like We're only doing mouth recognition, which only had like 20 points in it. And the brown, also known as the frown, uh, this is a cluster with only a single action unit because it looks a little different from the others. And then the neutral action unit cluster was just its own. This is kind of the default. And this is the most important one. This was uh, classifying the things into the various clusters. The confusion matrix here shows kind of how our performance was. You can see along the right column there, there's a lot of confusion between the left and right uh, clusters and the neutral cluster. So that, that might be because the action units weren't properly labeled, or our suspicion is that like those action units, if you looked at them, uh, earlier looked really similar, and they're pretty hard to distinguish without like doing a lot of facial recognition. So we actually, so here's the, uh, this has the uh, recall along each uh, cluster, and yeah, our goal is to make that high. And the baseline algorithm is just the one versus one multi-class SVM classifier. It achieved 0.444 about, and we achieved like 0.6 I saw on the previous slide, so we actually beat it. And yeah, future work, as I said, uh, yeah, we can use some temporal domain knowledge to try and classify those particular things that have movement in them, like frowns. That helps distinguish them from the neutral face, which isn't really moving. And big thank you to Professor Torre uh, for providing interface and for teaching. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Um, I'll do it. They made me do it. 